Thank you. Let's open our Bibles to Book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. We're going to look at one verse. Verse 31. Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. The title of the message is, Why Do You Doubt? Why Do You Doubt? Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Brother Caleb, can you pray for the message? Doubt is a common topic. Doubt is something that creeps into your heart many times. You get to doubt during your exams, whether it's educational, whether it's physical, and you get to doubt you know, during any of the events where their outcome is not certain. Maybe your competition, if you are involved in sports, and you have doubts during your Christian life, it's inevitable. You and I are not perfect. So we go through valleys. We go through mountaintop experience. And in between, doubts come into your mind. One tribe in Native Americans, you know, they have a you know, passage to being adult. And what happens is that they take take this young man out to the wilderness, they blindfold him overnight. Think about it, in a jungle. I don't know about you, jungle is not a place that I want to be, and especially by myself during middle of the night. There are, what's out there? Obviously, they have a lot of bugs, you know, crawl, uh, crawling creatures. I mean, one of the things that you know, I don't really want to deal with is cockroaches, right? I mean, imagine you're in the middle of jungle. There are you know, huge cockroaches all over the places. There are big ants. We're not talking about little ants. We're talking about big ants. You know, there's like bullet ants, right? It's, it really feels like you got shot. And you have mosquitoes. Imagine all night you're getting you know, stung by mosquitoes. And you're there all alone. And what happens is that when you hear even a little bit of a sound, like a twigs twitching, you know, leaves falling, some animals moving in the distance, you start having doubts. Am I safe? Think about it, you're a young man. You're blindfolded. And the only thing that you could do is hear and listen. However, during this ritual, as the sun rose up, there was someone watching him all night. And that was his father. His father was watching him all night. Something that you and I tend to forget when we doubt for whatever circumstance we're in is that there's always Lord watching over us. You and I already know that you know, when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he comes inside of you as your Lord and Savior. However, we tend to forget that many, many times. Because of many false teachings, people start doubting salvation. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. There's no reason for you to doubt your salvation 
right now in the church age if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. However, because, because maybe you were taught the wrong doctrine, because maybe you are following your feelings and emotions, you doubt your salvation. Doubting salvation is like spitting on the Lord's face. It's like you're telling God that I don't believe what you said in the Word of God. There's no reason for you to doubt your salvation. The reason you doubt your salvation is maybe you're not saved in the first place, or you just don't know what it is to have eternal security. We discussed this many times in our you know, internet channel. You know, we have a lot of teachings from you know, our preachers regarding assurance of salvation. The one thing is that if your final authority is the Word of God, you shouldn't doubt your salvation. Because that's what the Bible says. The reason you and I are here is because of the Word of God. We trust every word. Only thing is that you're going to inevitably doubt your salvation or many of the doctrines in the Word of God if you follow wrong teachings. That's what you're going to have. Because some verses in the Bible, if you don't rightly divide the Word, they're going to say you have to endure until the end to get saved. I mean, there's a, tri I mean, there's a tribulation plan of salvation. There's a you know, salvation plan before Lord Jesus Christ. There's transitional time when people get saved, you know, during the book of Acts. And if you do not rightly divide the word of truth, this word of God, you got to get confused. That's why many people, even though they confess and testify that I knew I was a sinner, and I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I don't know where I'm going after I die. And funny thing is, some people had that assurance, right? You know, when you first accepted Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you knew for sure, I know where I'm going because Lord saved me. But suddenly, you start going through many channels in the YouTube, many teachings. You start going to like, you know, person A, B, C, D. And then you start going to some churches and you start hearing different things. You're like, you have to, you know, follow the Mosaic commandment, right? Or some people will say, you know, if you don't act like disciple of Jesus Christ, you know, you're not going to guess, you're going to lose your salvation. And certain times, people will come up with the verses to back it up. Then your mind wonders, and then you're like doubting. Am I really saved? And then many important topics such as tribulation, you know. Oh, am I going to go through tribulation, right? And then you're going to start questioning many of the things that you believed in the first place, because of wrong teachings. That's why it is very important who you follow. You're going to doubt your salvation or certain things in the Word of God if you follow wrong teachings. I'm not telling you to blindly follow everything that I say, our pastors say in our channel, or in our teachings on Sunday mornings or Wednesdays or Thursdays. You have to study for yourself and weigh the evidence. You have to do your due diligence. Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that not, needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Which means you're going to inevitably doubt your salvation, or any other thing in the Word of God if you don't study for yourself. Only conviction you get will be coming from your own. That's why many of you never grow as a Christian 
Many of you stay as an immature Christian. Many of you stay as a baby Christian because you don't study. Not only that, you don't grow because you don't study the right things. Babies need to have a right nutrition. They need proteins, right? They need fiber. They need vitamin. However, if you feed them wrong things, just feed them salt and sugar the whole time, what's going to happen to the baby? Just feed them soda. I know you, some of you guys you know, love soda. Or just feed them boba drinks instead of water or milk the whole time. What's going to happen to the baby? Baby is not going to grow, right? They'll, baby will be malnutrition and baby is going to be physically ill. That's the state that some of you guys are in. Even though you're a saved Christian, because you are not grounded in the right doctrine, you're not eating healthy food, healthy doctrine, what happens? You are getting sick. One thing I know about human you know, psyche is that when you're, when you're not doing well physically, you doubt a lot of things. And when you are not doing well physically, you start tending to believe everything because you're doubting. Am I really going to get well? Think about it. People who's going through you know, terminal stages of cancer, they're going to start doubt. Even if they're saved or unsaved Christian, they're going to doubt. How long do I have to live? Right? And you're going to start hearing a lot of noise from outside, whether it's from doctors, whether it's from your friends, whether it's from anybody else. Think about when Job was going through his you know, tribulation. He was hearing a lot of stuff from so-called his friends. And during those times, devil will definitely use the opportunity to try to make you doubt God's provision. God's, he, devil's going to try to doubt you know, God's care for you in your life. And devil's going to completely make you discouraged. A lot of times when you look at your life, when you're going through a discouraged stage of your life, it shows that you're doubting a lot of things in your life. You could be worried about your finances. You could be worried about your relationships. You could be worried about a you know, variety of things. You're doubting. You're continuing to doubt. Am I going to actually you know, put food on the table for my family? Is this relationship going to really work out? You know? Like all these things, the you know, devil puts it in your head. And it is all the result of you not following the right doctrine. It is result of you not following the Word of God. It is result of you living in sin. When you are living in sin, you're going to doubt a lot of things. Because you yourself know that, hey, I'm living in sin. I'm not doing right. So, I probably something's going to happen in my life. But you know what? That's healthy thing. That's Holy Spirit convicting you that, hey, something's wrong with you. Do you ever doubt that Lord's going to bless you when you don't do what the Lord tells you to do? When you, you don't follow His will? When you don't do what you're supposed to do as a Christian, as a child of God? Definitely you're going to have doubts. You're living a good Christian life for first two months of the year. And last, or this month in March, you've just gone straight down the toilet, right? You started sinning again, the sin that you didn't commit for the first two months. You start not spending more time in the Word of God. Your prayer time, or your time that you spend with the Lord, started decreasing from January, 
February, now it's March. And pretty soon, it's got to be non-existent when April comes. Why? Because your life is full of doubts. That's why. You don't think about the Lord. You don't think about the Word of God. You just think about everything that's happening in your life. In that sense, you're going to doubt. Just like our text, right? When Peter was looking somewhere else, he started doubting. With you, your life, you're going to doubt for sure when you start looking somewhere else. Young people, it's all about education, right? And you're going to start doubt. Doubt's going to start creeping in your head when you replace education on top of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever you put something over things of God, there's going to be doubting in your life. Why? Because you're living in sin. Imagine there's a fugitive running away from law. They're going to be always worried. Am I going to get caught today? Am I going to get caught tomorrow? You're going to have doubts. When is the Lord going to punish me? As a loving father who chastises his children, when am I going to get punished? And you start doubting. And that doubt turns into discouragement, and that discouragement turns into you being a no-good Christian for the rest of your life. For some of you. That's what the devil wants. That's why the devil works in a very, very, how should I say? Like when you, from, it doesn't go straight to the hot water. It doesn't go straight to the cold water. He starts you from the room temperature, and then he brings it down little by little, little by little. Little by little. Miss a church one day. It's fine. You have good excuse. Miss church next day. Fine. You have another excuse. Miss church the third time. It's fine. You have another excuse. And then you start going down the hill. When your life goes, turns upside down. And things don't go out the way that you think. And you start doubting. Man. Does the Lord really love me? And then you start focusing on yourself when the problem is completely with you. You're the one who's neglecting the Lord. You're the one who's neglecting the Word of God. You're the one who's neglecting the ministry. And you start complaining to God. God, why dost thou forsake me? Why does this happen? Look at your life. There's no re reason for you to doubt the Lord. You need to doubt yourself. You need to check yourself and examine yourself. Am I really living in the Word of God? Am I really looking unto Jesus? Am I really spending time with the Lord on a daily basis? That's why some of your life is miserable. We'll leave it at that. Your life is miserable. As a Christian, you should be living a joyful life. You're saved from hell, you have the perfect word of God, you have many good teachings, you have opportunity to witness to the lost world out there. But when you examine your life, it's full of doubts, uncertainty, and it's misery. Wow. If I'm someone watching from outside, third party, I look at your life, I'm like, man, I don't want what you have. You call yourself a Christian, but all you do is worry. You call yourself a Christian, you're never at the church. You call yourself Christian, you're never on your knees. You call yourself Christian, you never praise the Lord. You call yourself a Christian, you never study the Word of God. You call yourself a Christian, you don't love your brethren. You call yourself Christian, you just gossip all the time about the people you say you love. You call yourself a Christian, but I don't see any Christ in your life. Then, think about it. How do people not have doubt about you and your faith? Then, it's really a double-edged sword. 
You're such a bad testimony to others that they don't want to get saved. You're such a bad testimony to yourself, look yourself in the mirror, that you don't want to do anything for the Lord. Your example of being a defeated Christian. How many of you guys like to lose? None of you. Nobody wants to lose. However, you're, lo- you're living a losing Christian life. You're living a defeated Christian life. Do you think having money will erase all the doubts? No. Ask millionaires who die suddenly because of heart attack, because of cancer, because of car accidents, you name it. Do you think you're not going to have any doubts in your life because you got into some nice school? What's that going to get you, honestly, if God doesn't open doors? I have a degree from Harvard, and I'll apply to this place. I'm going to get in no matter what. But the Bible says, you know, somehow you grew up in a Bible-believing church. You remember the words, right? You know, if you're not in the will of God, right? Don't expect things to really work out. Now you get rejected, rejected, and rejected, and then rejection after rejection. You can't get any job. But however, you apply to some places where there is no Bible-believing church, and then you get offered. Now you tell me, is that the will of God or is that the will of the devil? Do you think you will be a happy Christian without any doubts in living in the will of God when you're making millions of dollars but you don't have any church to go to because of your own decision and you have no time for church or anything related to Word of God? That is not in the will of God. Sometimes Christians just don't recognize or understand what should be most important in your life. If you have 100% faith, if you follow God, and if you follow the Word of God, and if you're in right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, there should never be any doubt about any part of your life whether it's job, whether it's your health, whether it's your education, whether it's relationship or anything. Because you know that whatever happens is in the will of God. However, if you're not in the will of God, you're living in sin, don't ever, ever think that you cannot get away or you'll be getting away from doubts. Those doubts is a warning. It's warning to you. When you doubt that is missing church a good thing? It's a warning. You shouldn't be missing church. When there's a doubt that it's not praying today a good thing? It's a warning. It's missing not reading the Word of God today? Is that a good thing? It's a warning. It's not praying together with my family as head of the house or as mother of loving children. Am I going to skip it today? Is that a good thing? There are doubts. Am I going to study more of the worldly stuff than the Word of God? Because my parents really want me to study more than the Word of God? Is that a good thing? You start doubting. That's a conviction. Holy Spirit convicting you. It's time for you to wake up. Time for you to get right with the Lord. Time for you to realize what is most important in your life. You know, we always preach balanced Christian life. When you're in balance, you have the Lord first and everything else second, but you do heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, you're fine. However, how many of you guys think that you're doing heartily unto the Lord? Lord first and everything else second. No. 
for almost all of you is everything else first and Lord second. Why is it that Lord is always second in your life? You know, one thing I never can understand, because I myself have went through it, and I'm sure many of you, especially, you know, older Christians, do you ever lack a time to do things, other things, when you spend right time for the Lord? If you do everything that's required to do and spend time for the Lord, do you ever lack time to do other things? Never. If you spend the time that you need to with the Lord, wherever it may be or whenever it may be, Lord always provides time for other things. I mean, Lord, we believe in an almighty God who does the impossible. You're like, oh man, I'm doubting this. I doubt I'm gonna do well in my test if I don't study 100 hours. And then you miss all the church and the test comes out. One question that you never study comes out. One question that does not come to your head comes out. Who controls your mind? Who controls everything going on in your life? You think you're gonna lose doubts when you don't put God first? Never. You think you're going to lose doubts when you sacrifice God for everything other? Never. As you grow up as a new Christian, middle Christian, old Christian, you have to remember, you will always have doubts in your life if you don't put God first. It's inevitable. People living in sin, coming from my own experience, you're going to have doubts. You're going to have doubts about your whatever that's going on in your life. Why? Because you know that you're not in the will of God. You're not living in the will of God. I mean, some of you guys like, need to hear it over and over. You are not living in the will of God right now. Look at your life. And it's not an excuse when you start blaming other people in your life and circumstances in your life. That is not a cause for excuse. Did our Lord and Savior stop dying for you and me because of people around him? Circumstances around him? No. He died on the cross because he loved you and me. He did not stop. But many of you guys, because of what's going on surrounding in your life, and don't get me wrong, it's not an easy thing when you have to go against your parents, your loved ones, people that you care about, but at the end of the day, who's most important in your life? Is it Lord Jesus Christ? Is it your mom? Is it your dad? Or is it someone else? Man, I had to forsake my mom, everybody else, to keep the faith, beginning of my faith. Because Lord wants to know. Lord tests people. Who do you love more, me or your family, me or your money, me or your health, me or your education, me or ABC, everything else? For many of you guys, you say it confidently, I love you, Lord, more than anything else. However, that's only worse. You talk the talk, but you never walk the walk. What are you doubting today? Again, what are you doubting today? What keeps you from doubting to come and sit where you're supposed to be sitting and get blessed through the Word of God and preaching, through Bible studying, listening to specials? What are you doubting that's keeping you from 
reading the Word of God, getting on your knees and praying, what are you doubting today? There is no reason for you to doubt. When you trust the perfect Word of God, when you trust perfect Lord and Savior, when you trust that when you are in the will of God, whatever happens is in the will of God. And there's no reason for you to doubt, worry, get discouraged. Instead, you'll be joyful, happy, praising the Lord over and over and over. This doubt is a great sin. This doubt that's happening in your life is something that you need to take care of. Uh, I mean, I really hope that you have no doubts about salvation if you truly trust Jesus Christ. You shouldn't have doubts about certain doctrine if you're following the right people, doing the right diligent study, having open mind. I mean, it's hard. It doesn't matter whether you grew up in a Calvinist church, Jehovah's Witness church, Seventh-day Adventist church, you know, hardcore Catholic church, or any other church. You have to study the Word of God and weigh the evidence. If the Bible says Jesus Christ is the only way, and if you believe in the Word of God, if some other people start saying other stuff, then you have to study. And if the Bible says this, then forget about what anybody else says about anything else. Then you won't have doubts about the right doctrine. And lastly, you won't have doubts about your Christian walk and Christian life if you live in the Word of God. What does that mean? You put God first in everything. Simple as that. Does God play number one in your life? Does God play number one every day of your life? Does God play number one every minute, every second of your life? Does your head have God number one over anything else that you hear from people, may might be your loved ones or your circumstances? Is God truly number one? Do you look at the Lord always first before you look at anything else. That's why it makes no sense that I love the Lord, I serve Him, but you never look at Him. You always look at everything around you, and then you look at Him finally. And when you do look at Him, you start complaining to Him and murmuring. Why didn't I get this? Why didn't I, you know, how come I don't have this? Man, oh ye of little faith. Where is your faith? As a Christian, Bible-believing Christian, so-called, you have to start growing. And you cannot be, you know, what's the word? Decreasing, right? Some of you have gotten worse and worse as the years went by. I remember some of you, you were really fired up for the Lord. The Lord was number one in your life. But as you start going through your junior high, high school stages, even college, you've gotten worse and worse and worse. You're not the same, you know, Bible-loving, God-first, God-ministry-loving, soul-loving person anymore. Doubt has started creeping in your heart, in your life, where you started praying, putting other things first in your life. Look at your life today, Christian. Do you have many doubts? It's a sign, it's a warning that you're putting other things in your life over God. And you're putting other times, other efforts over God. It's a sign that you're not on your knees enough. It's a sign you don't put word of God first. It's a sign you don't think about ministry. It's a sign you don't think about lost souls out there. It's a sign for you to get right with the Lord. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have to start over. You have to get right with the Lord. You have to have a change of mind 
You have to have a rededication, recommitment, you know, your own revival, whatever you call it, where you put God first, everything else second, no doubt about it, God's will first in my life, and I want you, Lord, I want to follow your will. I don't care about education. I don't care about money. I don't care about health, relationship. Everything's going to work itself out as long as I put you first in my life, as long as I show with my conversation and my actions that you're number one in my life, I know that I won't have any doubts. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Henry Father, we're no better than Apostle Peter. We're no better than anybody else sitting next to us, in front of us, or anybody who's listening. We're just a safe sinner who don't deserve your grace and mercy, who don't deserve everything that you have blessed us with. But by your grace and mercy, we continue, Lord God. And I pray that we examine ourselves and see where you're at in the rankings, Lord. We have so many doubts in our lives because we don't put you first in our lives, Lord God. You have become second, third, as time goes by, you're, you have become last, Lord. I pray that we all get right with you, Lord, put you as our priority number one, always, every day, every second, every minute. I pray that we'll really, really enjoy this Christian walk where we should be joyful, where we should be a blessing to our brethren as well as lost souls out there so that we could be the light to this lost world, Lord God. Heavenly Father, please be with Pastor Shrive. Lord, heal him according to your will, Lord God. I pray that every procedure set up will be done quickly and fast, Lord. I pray that you continue to protect us during this crazy times, Lord. We just trust in you. And the moment, Lord God, I pray that you come right now, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.